I'm Chuck Todd, moderator of Meet the Press. I'm joined not just by the, the directors of the film, Andrea and Sean, uh, who you've gotten to meet, but also uh, with us uh, is, uh, uh, is Abby Greensfelder. I don't want to mess up your name there, Abby, as we discussed okay. this at our pre-show a little bit. So Abby, you were the producer, um, which means you decided to make this film. Why, what, what started this conversation for you? Yeah. Well, first, Chuck, thanks for moderating this panel and for watching the movie and for being in the movie. Um, well, thanks for including it. <laughs> this um, story, you know, timing had a lot to do with it. In 2019, the beginning of 2019, I just set up this new company. My background is a network exec at Discovery, and then I had another production company, but I just started this company called Every Woman Studios, which is telling female focused stories about and by women. And just in March, the women issued this lawsuit against their employer, it was front page of the New York Times. And I remember thinking to myself, like, who's telling this story? The story must be told. So as we were, as I was hearing about the story, I ended up thinking this is sort of the cultural moment story for women now, not just a soccer story, but for sort of women in general, people in general, and that this story should be told. So I happened to be, Sean and Andrea are friends and we've been talking right. about doing a project together and their films are particularly um, both sort of verite style but also human stories and very much I felt like from the beginning to tell the story right we wanted to tell their story and Sean and Andrea and I got together told them what this was about mm -hmm. and we decided to be uh, on this journey together as production partners making this movie and they can tell a little bit more about the journey but it's it's from the beginning, a story I felt needed to be told. Yeah, you know, I'm just curious, Andrea and Sean, do you think you were making an activist movie, making a, 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 what did you believe you were making and what do you believe you've created here? Is it, it's a movie about, is it a movie about gender equity? Is it a movie about a, a, a social movement? What would you, how would you describe it? Yes, <laughs> I think it's all of the above. I mean, I think, I think like anything, our eyes and ears are open when we start I think first you have to just say, okay, is it a story? Do you have great characters? Is there a trajectory that we can follow? Does it matter? Is it, can I make an audience relate to what's happening here? And you know, is it gonna go the distance? So I think we think about that very carefully. And so I think when we started, obviously it's historical. No team ever has ever tackled you know, their employer to be treated, female athletes to be treated the same as male athletes. So that is historical in itself. But these are not mere mortals, you know, these women, they just, the whole world knows about them. And I think that their fight has kind of in some ways been shockingly hidden for so long. And they're tremendous characters. Um, I also think that visually that opens up a whole world of soccer. I mean, I think female athletes don't really get their due is showing the power and the skill and how they all come across. So we knew we wanted to do that. But I think in terms of the approach and the perspective. First, we just wanted to see how we were gonna approach this. And it became kind of clear in the beginning that the US Soccer Federation was really not interested in gain, you know, granting us access in the telling of this. I mean, they didn't wanna grant you access to on a, on a lawsuit that would put them in a negative light. I'm shocked. Well, you know, I mean, that's the thing. So I think it really very much is like the personal side was how do we get this collective of women to let us in to trust and us. trust us? with something they you know they want media but this is really close to their heart and soul and they carry it as a sisterhood that they've been working this fight for decades so they they're holding a torch that they were passed and that they really wanted it to go the distance with so we very much felt like we wanted to make a personal story and let it take us where it will where, where it did <laughs> how hard was it to get the cooperation of the team and what, what about the hurdles of I don't know whether you ran into FIFA hurdles, uh, given World Cup was involved, but also the Federation itself. I mean, I guess I'm, look, I, I people don't need to know the, the details, but you know, I had to get permission for you guys to use whatever we had of during Megan Rapinoe's Meet the Press appearance. What kind of fight did you have with the, the, the Federation to get access? I mean, I don't, th it wasn't really a fight because it was just, you're not allowed to film, you know, our games if that's going to have, if your film's going to be about equal pay. And so, you know, since our film, and 
not to get into too much detail, but a lot of times when you film organizations, whether it's the NFL or U.S. Soccer Federation, they, they want to see your footage in your film. So we, we can't let that happen before the film airs. So we had to figure out creatively, how are we going to tell this story? How are we going to tell a soccer story about the most amazing soccer powerhouse athletes in America without being able to film them playing soccer? And I think like we worked really hard to figure that out. And as a team, we found a loophole in a particular few games where we were allowed to film and when we what film, the those loophole? Games, I'm just curious. <laughs> I don't think I could say, <laughs> but it's, it's just, it was a different, right. it's a different organization that U.S. soccer doesn't control those games. And so that organization let us film those games. And um, our, our coordinating producer worked really hard to get us access. And then when we got that access, we just brought the big guns. I mean, I shot, I'm also a cinematographer. And then we also brought I have connections with NFL films. We brought one of their guys shot full on high speed cameras like it's top notch like it's and we mm -hmm. we treated them in our footage like the athlete like they should be treated with the respect and dignity that they should be and try to capture that physicality that emotion that dedication they have to the game and and it's that stuff peppered throughout the film and i think it's it's invaluable to see because you understand how, how much they put into their sport abby talk about getting megan rapino to look she's she is a a, 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 as we've all learned, you guys know this better than most, you want to highlight an important issue, you need a great character, right? Yeah. You need somebody, I mean, this is why everybody's still watching our Q&A now, right? The, the, the film itself is so character-driven as it should be, if you want to understand the issue. Was it hard to get her to uh, cooperate? Yeah, it came together oddly kind of quickly. We mm -hmm. had, when Sean and Andrew and I got together, well, they had issued the lawsuit in the spring. And then of course, what happens if you're a world beating athlete and you're on this team and it's before a world cup, you're in like lockdown, right? So they were doing all these preparatory games and we weren't really able to access them. The first time we actually sat down as a, as a production team with Megan was after the world cup in New York, right before the ticker tape parade. And we had been sort of in communication with her before, but we actually sat down with her for coffee. We explained, what we wanted to do, the vision of this film, very much the idea like Sean and Andrea articulated that we wanted to tell their story in their own words. And it was kind of an amazing meeting because she just said, I'm in. She actually sent a text to me. She said, Abby, let's do this. And I think it takes enormous trust and sort of bravery to go on this process because it is very, Abby, you know, you you're on TV. But Abby, shouldn't, shouldn't you have said, LFG. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Well, that's an interesting story in itself, how the title came to be. Like, I feel like Andrea seized on that early yeah. and said, like, this should be the title of the film. And I remember we said, if you loved RBG, come watch LFG. Well, but it Andrew, was amazing. Talk, this, Megan talk was about that. in at the beginning. Well, I think I think in the the, the idea is that what well, first off, when I heard the LFG was you know, for now everybody knowing what it means now when they're listening to this, that it just felt so them and you see them yell it in the movie and it comes for a guttural place. And, you know, you think about what the, the film was called in the nineties, that was the preeminent like women's soccer film, the nineties dare to dream. Right. So look at now what it is. It tells you a lot. And I think what we did with this title and the whole film in general is we met these players where they were at. It was so important that they felt like they saw themselves up on the screen, how they know each other, how they, that's why we worked really hard to have them introduce each other. And it's like the collective, but you get to know personalities too. And LFG just felt like that's how they talk. That's how they walk. That's what they want you to know. And, and they just like, they don't ask permission. They, they demand what they deserve. And that's kind of in that title. So we knew it was going to be an uphill battle, but I was like, guys, guys, this has got to be the title, it's who they are, and it's how they walk into every battle, whether it's in the courtroom or on the field. What, um, you feel like this has been a, a fight for equal pay. Like, it, I think what has made, and not to get, I wanna get a little bit into the details of this, and, and Abby, I'll start with you. Um, is this about equal treatment in marketing, equal pay? I mean, is it, it does seem as if that there is, there is nuance to this debate, um, and, and and it's been it's sometimes hard to get at. Yeah, 
It's a great question. And it's interesting because in the telling of the story, it is so complex. And I think one of the things I'm proud about for the movie, and I think Sean Andrew did an amazing job in telling the story, a clear story and getting the facts right around the case, because the issue of equal pay in this case is very complex. But when you get to this issue in the world, it is one both of, it really comes down to valuing women. So how are sponsors coming in and supporting the sport? And how is it that players are being played as athletes? And it's very much the same as in the workplace. And part of the reason why I wanted to tell the story in the first place is that this is a very relatable issue, I think for every woman who's been in a workplace you know, as a woman, I came out of the unscripted industry, not a lot of women that run companies in that part of the business. And when you look at salaries and pegging salaries, they're not always even, right? So you think about that, but this in sports is also about how are the sponsors coming in, who's paying and the whole kind of economics of the business of sports, which is disproportionately disadvantaged women. And I think, Part of the story is about making the case too for why people should show up to games, should watch. These women are entertaining, both as athletes and you know as human beings. They're inspiring their stories. Well, it's a classic chicken and egg thing, I guess, uh, Sean. Yeah. It, it, you know, I, meaning, you know, would the marketing dollars be there if they treated men's and women's soccer the same, right? Like it, it, it is, you, you know, would the audience come if you marketed the sport? Yeah, I mean, you, they, they would, and we've seen it. I mean, after, after the World Cup, when you go and you watch the women play in the NWSL, like here in D.C., when you saw Megan Rapino play with her Seattle team, the stadium was sold out. I mean, it was just sold out. So, like, you know, if they put the marketing into letting people know, I mean, they're the best athletes at their sport in the world. And then they play in a league here in the United States, so you can go watch the best athletes in the world play their sport in your hometown it seems like a no brainer to kind of get that out there. But I also think there's just a, a, a baseline in the film too of, of, of the issue of value and how you value the person. It's, it's, it's value marketing dollars and all that, but it's how you value the person sitting across the table talking to you. I saw that in the film, like when we filmed mediation, like I was shocked to hear how the women felt the day we were shooting them, how they, were, they felt like US soccer didn't even show up at the table to, to talk to them, to value what they brought to the table. So there's that baseline value of someone's, someone's experience, their skill, what they're bringing to the table to talk about that I think the film touches on. That I think we all need to kind of shift, shift our mentality when, we just, when we're talking to anyone, whether it's US soccer talking, talking to a professional soccer player or it's me talking to someone entry level working for my company. It's, 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 we, have to, we have to value them Right, right away equally. And I think it's, it's very important. Uh, Andrea, I mean, it took, look, tennis went, has gone through this and it's still dealing with um, uh, sort of in, with, with some tournaments, making sure the, 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 the pool of money is equal, right? For the longest time, it wasn't equal at Wimbledon, wasn't equal at the French Open. Um, it, it, do you see this fight with women's soccer as sort of opening the door, maybe, re maybe, you know, does the WNBA next, you know, is that going to be a different conversation that is had, um, yeah. you know, or it, it, do you, do you expect this film and this lawsuit in general to sort of open the door all over the place in the sports world? I think I expect this film to have people asking slightly different questions than they did of sports organizations of how investment works within a team. I mean, I think what is distinctive in some ways about this case is that it's an, it's apples to apples and it is what, they would say because you've got one employer that employs both the men and the women's team. That's not always the case. So that's sometimes a little bit tricky. You also have a situation where this team, the women's team out earns the men's team in terms of bringing revenue in. So that is an interesting piece, right? So that allows for an easier track in a lawsuit. But what it also does is ask people to see some transparency. You should be able to have transparency within the revenue streams coming in. And I also, I, I do see that these questions are gonna start to ask, like you saw in the WNBA, like the, what was the, the weight room that, that was, was yeah, sorry, NCAA, the, the, the NCAA, weight room. NCAA, the women's yeah. tournament, oh my God, right. yeah. Right. You saw right. the weight room, right? So, yeah. so I do think a film like this will have people start to like have their ear out for something different and be like, are you kidding? 
Why were they given such different resources? I mean, and that's what we try to do with what's coming on in this film is that we try to take away some of the gauze that is not coming through this whole idea of like, let's get this out in the open. And I encourage, and I think that whether you're in a, a sporting organization or you're in a corporate atmosphere of like, let's get the stuff on the table. Let's be transparent about where are we investing money and what's the expectation of what it really takes. Because a lot of these men's organizations, teams, they've had investment for decades, yeah. right? We all know that. And these women are now coming to the table in these different sports and be like, look, we need the investment. That's how we're going to grow the sport. And maybe the film will inspire other yeah. women to stand up as a collective mm -hmm. to see these women to say, yeah. look, they stood up. It's not easy. You see throughout the film, it's very hard. It's yeah. time. It's so hard for them. And they can stand up and, and, and do something, inspire others to do that too. You know, Abby, I, I think about my 17-year-old. She's a fabulous softball player. Um, and I watch anytime softball shows up, women's college softball shows up on ESPN, she's mesmerized. And I'm sitting and wa loves watching, which means what? If there are a professional league that had was easy to access, easy to see, right. she'd be all over it. She'd be following it. Some corporate sponsor is going to argue, well, there isn't a fan base yet. Yes, but there could be, you know, invest in it. Right. Like this to me, you know, I, I've certainly evolved as a, as a human, I'd like to think, on, on women's sports in general, when you realize there's been no effort to create a market that could be there if you tried. We, we create markets and entertainment all the time. We start right. new social media platforms. Oh, look, this will be a way to get executives on Clubhouse. You know, why wouldn't we want and to create a new sports totally, league with a new fan base? Totally right. And if we looked at this as just like a market opportunity, which it absolutely is. Women's sports is the fastest growing audience within or market opportunity within sports. And women viewers of sports is the fastest growing segment. So there's real business and market opportunity. And I think it is, it is like the vicious cycle, as you were saying, if we say, well, no one shows up. But as Sean was saying earlier, if, if we market and tell people, hey, there's this NWSL game coming in your town, right. or the early days of the US women's national team when they would do their victory tours, they literally had to market, and this is not in the film, but you, know, you can't get everything in the film, but there are so many other great stories. They literally had to market their own victory tour. So again, it's about investing in women. It's about investing in women's sports in an appropriate and apportionate way to where the audience is. Well, it really is sort of, you know, it's funny you say that. This history of all sports in this country. That's right. At the early days, uh, Andrea, it was barnstorming. What Babe Ruth in the off season had to go around and, and show people his wares. The Boston Celtics, after they'd win a title, would do exhibition matches in the 60s all over the country in smaller towns. Why? To promote the sport. So it's right. not a new idea, but you would think a whole bunch of, of, of business investors at this point would say, hey, that worked then, maybe we ought to finance these. Right. Tours, uh, because that's how you create a league. And I, and I think that you do, you know, we have had the pleasure of starting to get to know some of these new NWSL ownership, you know, owners and the collective owners of like Angel City and like say the Washington Spirit. And I think you see a, a very progressive different idea about, hey, buy a ticket. You know, it's this is this is something that has intrinsic value and in how you really bring people into the sport. I think it's really exciting what's happening. I mean if for those who don't really aren't really familiar, something like Angel City is like it's a collective of power women who are former players, former, you know, like in current, like, you know, celebrity status that basically have ownership and are really trying to do something very, very different with the team. And it's, I think it's quite exciting because it's, it has, I mean, they're meant, it's a, it's a, an example of leadership all over the place, like business leaders, you know, people who like are conversations that people are listening to as well as former players. And I think you're going to see a difference on how those teams are being run and what they're expecting of investment dollars and what they offer to the communities that they're in. They're gonna be bringing in both boys and girls in a different way into those environments to be part of that. And you know that's something we're, we're excited about with this film is like, what is the life of this film after 
you know, it's 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 done its its rounds on um, distribution, and people have seen it in streaming. We're really excited. You know, you know, Abby and our companies, we own the picture. We want to do some impact where we're able to like bring and use the film as a tool to get conversations going um, that can make some difference. What, what I was just going to say, it, it's interesting that you say you, you, you sort of have it, you know, a lot of times, Sean, you know, uh, a filmmaker, you've made your film, you move on to your next project. That doesn't sound like what you guys are, are thinking here. No. And I mean, to be frank, we, we've never done that. Like Andrew and I, like all of our films have some type of impact and even from being guardians to one of the kids in one of our films. So like we have like, we're very close to the subject matter. Yeah, exactly. we are, invested, mm -hmm. but this film in particular has such, I think it has the potential for even a greater ripple effect, like a huge ripple effect. And so like, we're very excited what we've done here with Abby and partnering to kind of figure out how to maximize that ripple effect. Cause I, I also think there's this thing where I, that, you know, the, the owner of the Washington Spirit told us like the NWSL used to be looked at as like, kind of buy a ticket, here's a free ticket, feel bad for us, come watch, you know, come support, come support women. Instead of like, this is a badass game, come, come buy a ticket, come down, enjoy it, have fun, go home, talk about it. You know, that's, that's the men mental shift. I think this film has that mental shift too. It's fun, it's entertaining, it's like in your face. And I think that that's also the impact campaign that we're trying to do here is, is about that. It's like forward motion, 100%. You know, Abby, I remember not liking the WNBA's marketing push that said, hey, take your daughter to a basketball game. So the implication was somehow, um, first of all, the only, only, young, only girls will be interested in watching. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of an obligation for you as a parent. You know, and I thought, well, that's not, you're not marketing the game. Yeah. You're marketing something different. I think the idea, of course, well, I grew up in DC. We all live in DC, so hometown crew here. And right. I grew up going to Washington football team games with my dad, who was a huge fan. Actually, Sean also has family, has a history with the team. His grandfather was the photographer and dad. So the point is, sports aren't gender. Like, you're a fan, right? right? So why can't a boy and a girl be a fan of these heart beating badass female athletes when they play. And what I love about the way that we captured them in this movie and what Sean was saying about shooting it with the slow-mo camera as with the games that we got access, which was brilliant. It shows their physicality. It shows their skill. And I think any, any human being that watches that is just like, whoa, you know, and Sean and Andrew and I have, kids about the same age two boys they have two boys i have two girls all of our kids love this movie and and i think that's the point it's not a female movie this is a movie for everyone but it hits on themes that are universally resonant but we just happen to put the lens on a story that needs to be told and needs to be seen because it hasn't been told and these women haven't been valued as they should be not just in the game, but also sort of in our culture. And I think, I think my hope is people watch this and it shifts their view of what it means to be a female athlete. Why do you think, Andrea, that um, team sports, women's team sports has been, been much harder to market? Because I think about, we do idolize um, individual female athletes and have for decades. And, and okay. idolize the greatness of them, whether it's Martina Navratilova, Billie Jean King, uh, um, uh, you know, or you know, Serena Williams today. The individual sports, we've not had a bear, that, that mental block, I guess you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, it's the team sports that have, I think, where, where those, the women athletes, the star athletes and the team sports um, do get marginalized. I think it's sort of, I, you know, it's a, it's a great question and it's something to think about. And I start thinking about, well, what other films, what are the stories we tell ourselves growing up that we see? I can't, it's hard to think of any female in the pop culture narrative of a movie, a storyline, whichever. What about the Olympics? The Olympics are about the only thing, right? No, no, as you really, team, you as a team, you just sort right. of don't. Right. So, it's not, so I, you know, I think that's part of like, you know, that's part of what we like doing. You know, we, like the company, we're starting a, you know, impact studio called Change Content. And one of the ways that you make change is both 
what you do with the film after, right? That's the impact, that's the other stuff. The other part is, what do you do with the film while you're telling it? Whose story is you putting up there? Who's telling that story? Who's, who's making that story? Whose story is being told? The change of perspective and what those kind of voices and storylines are out there, we really enjoy doing that. And I think oftentimes the films that we make, you end up saying, well, what do I have to do with this person on screen? And if we've done our job by the end of it, you relate to them. And that's what we did with this film. That's what we really tried to do this. These women are exceptional. They're so different because they, they're the best of the best. But at the same time, you realize you can get inside their lives, the perspective they offer you, whether you're like one of the most famous women in the world, like Megan Rapinoe right now, right. or you're Jessica McDonald, who is kind of the every player, who's toiled you know, for a you know, very long time in the NW Salons, just getting on that team. I hope that by the end of it, you relate to them and you put their stories up there. So that's a long way of saying that the stories that we don't have out there, who do you emulate? Why do you do that? It, it's just self-perpetuating. And I think we're really exciting because we worked incredibly hard to creatively put something out there that's entertaining as well, that it starts with them because they are entertaining to watch. They're entertaining to see how they make a ripple of whatever they do. They're just cool. They're very you know, cool. I mean, you know, I mean, that matters a lot. You hate to say it in that terms, but it does. It's like, well, it's, it's you want to be around them. Yeah. The energy Megan had in the Meet the Press studio. I mean, you just, it, there's, you know, it's just yeah. cool. And that's where the creative choices start with us of how we start to populate the film. The yeah. way we don't know how we're going to tell a film. We let the characters, you start to meet them and study them and understand who they are. But that, that their swagger, their confidence infused how we chose the music, right? How we choose the graphics, how we, yeah, you know, sense. edit it. You know, we work, you know, sure. Jeff Consiglio is our editor that we work with and we work with on all of our films that um, do quite well. And he, he has a style and an idea that would just work so well with what we were trying to do. And you see them as rock stars by the end of it because they kind of are, you know, you've met, you know, when Megan walked in, you could just see- It was a rock star. You yeah. could feel it. Like people own a room and, it, and the, yeah. you felt it. And it was just, it was, it's fat, you know, and I say that, Abby, I'm going to close with this. Um, in 25 years, is there, is there going to be a national political convention that shows a clip of this film? Because one of the, one of the uh, characters in this film <laughs> getting a nomination. I mean, I, 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 I want to have a little fun, but, you know, I don't think that's insane to think about in 20. You know what? The world that we've just lived in the last couple of years. I mean, what I think is amazing and it's said in this movie is these women show up as they are. And I think that's part of why we love them because they don't have artifice. They are who they are and they are cool. Like you said, <laughs> they are just cool. And I think that would be amazing, right? Um, but I think, if, I think if that moment comes, it's because these women have used this moment in time, that it's this cultural touchstone moment, which I really think this lawsuit is, which we just kind of captured, right? They created the moment, we captured the moment. And I think if, if that moment comes to pass, it's because really it was a moment that resonated, which I hope that it will. Obviously the case isn't closed. So, you know, I hope that this movie moves people to do something and like Sean and Andrea said, we, as producers, as filmmakers, we're in the business of making impact and we are committed to helping get the story out there. Cause I think when people watch it, they'll want to do something. Well, look, uh, congratulations. I got to tell you, you know, and like every man, um, every father who ends up with a daughter, right. You, you, you feel like, you know, you, you want to fight even harder for this equity stuff. I, I, I watched my daughter today and she, she judges entities and organizations based on how they treat, how fair they are uh, on mm -hmm. this front. And it's not just fairness among gender, but it's fairness among. This is, the, I do think you guys have captured a moment. We are in a moment in time and it will feel even bigger. Your film will feel even bigger in a decade. So congratulations. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I so Thank appreciate you. it. Yeah. Sometimes you don't quite know, but it, it feels that way anyway. Hey, uh, one of the coolest things we do here at Meet the Press is partner with AFI Docs. We love uh, everything about them. It allows us um, to be even tangentially involved in something uh, as impressive as this. So uh, thank you to my friends at AFI Docs. 
Thank you to our filmmakers. And I'm glad you stuck around and watched until we meet again. Thank you. Thanks very Thank much. You. Enjoyed it.